am Alan Papalia. I'm a PhD student in Professor John Leonard's lab here at MIT. Um, I'm actually a student in the MIT Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute joint program, uh, which is a program kind of geared towards ocean engineering and oceanography. Uh, today we're here in the sailing pavilion um, down in a marine autonomy lab here, uh, which is where we run a lot of our experiments. My name is Brendan O'Neill. I'm also a PhD student in John Leonard's lab, also in the joint program. Uh, the topic we'll be discussing today is uh, human robot teaming for diving operations. And the general concept of what we're talking about doing is human divers have a very difficult time uh, doing what we call dead reckoning. So navigating based off of kick counts and a compass bearing uh, in an undersea environment. Uh, there's drift involved, uh, compass bearing readings are coarse, uh, so it's very difficult to navigate both accurately and with precision. Uh, there's a lot of classic diving techniques to deal with that accumulated error. Um, however, what we postulated was that an autonomous underwater vehicle with good navigation could aid a diver uh, and create this base for a human robot team that will do uh, much more than simply help each other navigate, but uh, navigation being the chief problem to solve at the outset. Uh, and what we envisioned was uh, a, an autonomous underwater vehicle and a diver deploying uh, in uh, relative proximity, but they do not have to be extremely close to each other, and having some idea um, of a target grid that they want to get to. So the diver would have an initial bearing to that target, uh, and the underwater vehicle would have an initial estimate of the diver's position and begin maneuvering in a pattern relative to that diver. So what we're using right now is circles. So the vehicle would encircle the diver. Uh, now both members of the team are equipped with uh, Hui Micromodem 2, uh, which allows them to exchange acoustic messages. Those messages have uh, timestamp information, uh, estimates of latitude and longitude for each team member, but also the exchange of the message itself, itself allows the team members to range to each other. Now those ranges, uh, they inform state estimation on the diver's tablet. We have a constant velocity profile for the diver that's based on uh, trial runs previously, and then we also have the divers heading from their compass. Um, so. Uh, through non-linear uh, non least squares state estimation, we're able to fuse all those measurements and get a more accurate update on the diver's position. Uh, and the computer also calculates a recommended heading for the diver as the vehicle encircles the diver all the way to the target and then encircles the diver as they reach the target, um, giving them an approximate distance and a recommended heading in order to get to their desired location. I have nothing to draw, but I'll hold the pen. Uh, so I think what's really exciting about this problem, or what we're doing, um, is we're using a lot of techniques that have shown up elsewhere in robotics. Um, but it's really trying to bridge the gap and find ways for robots to, to actually assist humans. So normally when you see these things show up, it's just a robot trying to do something, and it's full autonomy. You know, there's no real interaction with the human. This is one of those places where we found a really nice niche for, for humans and robots to work together. Maybe looking towards the future, there's some really interesting and challenging algorithmic problems that show up in this, specifically in terms of trying to couple the diver and the AUV, the robot. Kind of with the system we have right now, it's really just the AUV's kind of the workhorse, I would say. Um, it's in terms of helping the diver know where it is, so it's you know, swimming around, more or less telling the diver everything. Um, but there's huge potential in actually having the diver provide feedback to the AUV um, to give more guidance and actually rely on some of the strengths of a human diver, like being able to, to recognize like notable points in the environment. Right, uh, so yeah, this right here in front of us is kind of the, the key piece of our, our experimental equipment. Um, so this is an autonomous kayak. And essentially, this is our proxy for an autonomous underwater vehicle. Reasons for that, ease of deployment, cost, of the, cost and availability of the platform, so that we can more rapidly test our algorithms. Um, 
We also have a platform just using a kayak or a small dinghy uh, for the diver. Um, in this platform, we have uh, a Hui Micromodem 2 deck box. Um, that is our acoustic modem, which connects to a transducer. Uh, this is a towfish, um, and the transducer is right here. Uh, that allows for the message exchange through the water column. And then uh, for our experiments up to this point, we have had an operator in uh, the Jet Yak uh, for safety and uh, just to uh, iterate more quickly through runs of like starting and stopping uh, the communication flow. And then uh, for ground truth, we use a GPS signal. And then in this platform, in order for it to be autonomous, we have our algorithm running on a backseat computer, which is just a laptop in this case. And then the controls for the throttle and steering uh, in autonomous mode are run by a PixHawk computer on the front seat, a PixHawk controller. I think what you're seeing is maybe one of the biggest perks of marine robotics, which is where you get to do experiments is actually kind of an enjoyable place. So we're not just stuck in a little lab indoors. Mm -hmm.